ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله من خلقه وصفيه اما بعد فنسال الله عز وجل باسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلى ان يجعلنا واياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين احسنا انه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه ثم اما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته we are still on a journey through this beautiful hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks directly to his creation exactly like he will do yawm al qiyamah like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, there is none among you or he will be in seclusion with his Lord. He will not be in need of anybody translating for him. He will speak to them and they will speak to him. Exactly like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak directly to the people of hellfire. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak directly to the people in Jannah. And exactly like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to you in every prayer. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, meaning that we do not have to wait for Allah jalla wa ala to connect to us. We do not have to wait for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak to us for death. Even before we die, we can establish a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of the earth. And when that connection is established, that's the most beautiful day of your life. That is a day that you will remember because that's the day where you are not just in connection with Allah through your mind, but through your soul. With your soul, a soul connection. Imagine that small, tiny human being in connection with the Kabir al Muta'al Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said, Every prayer is a two way communication between me and my servant. Every time we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, My servant has praised me. I mean, if we just would give a second thought or if we just would ponder over the meaning of this hadith, it is enormous, it's gigantic. Every time we pray, Allah Jalla wa Ala speaks to us. The problem is that we don't take the time just to imagine ourselves Allah replying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that when he praises me, I say, my servant has praised me. And then when he says, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin, Allah replies again. And then when you say, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in, when you say, oh my Lord, I ask you to help me and assist me, and it's only you that I want, only you that I ask for help and guidance, Allah says, this is between me and my servant and I will give my servant what he's asking for when he says so every day five times a day at least times 17 not five times 17 17 rakaat every time you say this Allah speaks to you and this is why Allah Jalla wa Allah says wa aqimi salata li dhikri Yani perform established prayer in order to do dhikr of me why? because when you do dhikr of him, of him he does dhikr of you when you do dhikr of him he is do dhikr of, he does dhikr of you. No, further, more. The only reason why you do dhikr of him is because he thought that you were worthy of being done dhikr of. The only reason why you did dhikr is because he wanted to do dhikr of you. So whenever you do dhikr of Allah Jalla wa Ala, you know that Allah is mentioning you to his angels. So now to come back in this hadith, Allah Jalla wa Ala addresses the Muslimin and he says, Ya ibadi. And we already mentioned a lot. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that we are all in need of his guidance for him to feed us, for, for him to protect us. He says, Ya ibadi once again. Look, he's about to mention that we are sinners 24-7. He says that we are always in a state of sin. He says, nevertheless, Ya ibadi, my servants. So he's about to tell you that you are disobedient towards the king of the universe. That he has asked you so many things to be done which you didn't do. And to stay away from so many things which you didn't stay away from. But nevertheless he says, Ya ibadi, my servants, know that I don't give up on you as long as you don't give up on me. 
It is very clear, people sometimes blame Allah. Then they say, why does Allah not love me? Because if He would have loved me, I would not have sinned. Rather we say, why does He keep on loving you although that you are sinning? He is not the one that turned away from you. You are the one that turned away from Him. But after the sin, here we are again in the mosque on Friday, praying, zikr, khutbah, and everything we want. Allah never gave up on us. I know when I pray that I'm not deserving of prayer. I know when I do dhikr, I'm not deserving of dhikr. But Allah's rahmah is bigger than our sin, and that's the only reason why we were not destroyed as yet. Ya ibadi, my servants, I am calling you. My servants, I am addressing you. My servants, I am talking to you. Ya ibadi, inna kum tukhti'oona layla wa nahar, wa ana aghfiru dhunuba jami'a, fastaghfiruni. Aghfiru lakum ustah. Yes, if you just look at the simplicity, you just look at the ease by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares this. He says, my servants, still the servants, you are committing errors during the day and during the night. And I forgive all the sins. The only thing I want you to do, فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِي Ask me for forgiveness and I will forgive you. Do you know that the amount of times that we sinned, is more than the amount of times that we, we repented. The amount of times that we sin towards Allah Jalla wa ala is more than the times that we said sorry. So the first thing we need to do, always, on our path to Allah, like Ibn Qayyim says, is Tawbah. Tawbah, repentance should always be your second nature. The moment you sin, you repent. The reason being, because if you do not repent, you die in a state of sin. Either you die in a state of a repenter, or either you die in a state of a sinner. Well, who do you want to be? Man mata ala shayin bu'itha alay, said the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. The way you die is the way that you will be resurrected. So they say, the more you expose yourself to sin, the more chance there is that you will die while sinning. But if you're always a repenter, then most likely Allah Jalla wa ala will guide you towards repentance when he knows that you are about to die. Because the Prophet said, He said, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the good for someone, there are, there's more than one riyah, the other one is asara. If Allah wants good for someone, he squeezes him. They said, what is squeezing him, Ya Rasulullah? He says that Allah guides him towards his last good deed before he dies. That is when you're a person of repentance. When you repent all the time, do you know that Al Qadi Hibatullah al Barizi, who died in 738, he was a grand Qadi. He said, وَقَدْ أَجْمَعَ الْعُلَمَاءُ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ تَأْخِيرَ التَّوْبَ عَنْ وَقْتِهَا ذَنْبٌ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَتُوبَ الْعَبْدِ Do you know that delaying your tawbah, he says, delaying your tawbah, repentance, while you are in a state of uh, while it is po possible for you to repent, meaning that you delay the tawbah without any reason, that the delaying itself is a sin. Because by delaying the repentance, you are actually saying, Ya Rabbi, I don't care, even if you don't say it, but that's what you show. You say, I don't care, that I continue living on in a state of sin after which I have not repented, so not repenting is an istihada to bilafratillahi an ilayk. They say that not repenting after a sin is because you look down upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking at you. Ya ibadi, inna kum tukhti'oona bil layl wa nahar, wa ana aghfiru dhunuba jami'a, fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum. And then we come to a second part, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes very clear that He is not in need of your sujood, He is not in need of your deen. It is not on you that the deen rests, it is not on me. It is in the hands of Allah Jalla wa And sometimes people think that they are the reason that other people are religious, that other people are spiritually strengthened, and they attribute it to themselves. Allah Jalla wa is not in need of you, not, not in need of me, he says after this. He says, Ya ibadi, لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب رجل واحد منكم ما زاد ذلك في ملك الشيء آخر. ويا عبادي. لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أفجر قلب رجل واحد منكم ما نقص ذلك من ملك شيء آخر. Oh my servants. If all of you would have the most pious heart of one pious man, and the most pious heart ever, and everybody would have that heart. 
He says, that would not add anything to my dominion, not anything to my honor, not anything to my majesty. He wouldn't add anything because I am al-ghani, ghina and mutlaqa Because he is al-ghani, not in need of every, anything. So this is why sometimes when we keep on doing good, and then we find that whenever we do good, that people respond in an evil, negative way. So eventually I say, you know what? Ya Rabbi, I've been doing good all the time, and this is what I receive from the people. I will stop doing good. The one who does good is on his own behalf, and the one who does evil, it's against him. You don't do good because you want to receive good from the people, because they will not. One day when people are stable and before they used to depend on you, lean on you, that's a day where they leave you. But Allah Jalla never leaves you. So you on this planet earth, you don't do anything for the sake and the pleasure of people. Because doing that will make you sad. Doing it for Allah will make you glad. Doing it for Allah will be something you never regret. So don't say, I will leave it. If you leave it, Allah Jalla will, yani, he will not cry over you. And then he says, If you have the most corrupt heart, that wouldn't diminish anything from my dominion. So meaning that we pray because we are in need. We beg because we are in need. We do good because we are in need. We don't say, you know what, I'm going to do something for Allah. Doing something for the sake of Allah just means that if you do it in that way, that it will be accepted by Allah, but you are not adding something to Allah's dominion. If you sin, it doesn't take anything away from His dominion. It takes something away from you. A higher level in paradise, an everlasting joy in your heart, happiness in this life and contentment. You know what it feels like when you sin. It literally tackles you down and, and just, it's like literally a spiritual knockout and makes you end up for 10 counts or more in the ring of despair, in the ring of loss. That is what sinning is about. And then he says, Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum qamu fi sa'idin wahidin fa sa'aluni fa a'taytu kulla wahidin minhum mas'alatah ma naqasa dhalika mimma indi illa kama yunqisu al-mikhyatu idha budkhil al-bahr. Then he says, O my servants, if the first amongst you, the last amongst you, the jinn among you, and mankind among you, were to gather together in one place and every single soul amongst them would ask me for something and I would give it to them, it would not diminish anything from my dominion exactly as if you were to take a needle, put it in the sea and look at what you come back with. Put a needle in the ocean and look at the drip. The drop will drip off your needle, nothing will remain. That's the dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whenever I give something, now, it doesn't diminish anything. What does this mean? This revives within us. If you want something desperately, a solution to your problem, you want someone to wipe your tears, it doesn't happen. You want your beloved one to, to come back to you. You want whatever you want after a divorce, whatever. All these things that you are going through, if they do not happen, it is not because Allah can't. And that is where we need to submit. We are not the designers nor the architects of every part of our lives. Sometimes our lives don't go as we wish because it goes as Allah wants it to go. And why does it go in that way? Because He wants to take away from you a disease. Impatience, ignorance, despair, and He wants to create within you a power. Generosity, courage, insight, whatever it may be. So what he takes away from you, which you want, if you were to know what you are getting instead, you would be asking Allah, Ya Rabbi, don't give me what I'm looking for, but give me what you know what is better for me. That's the heart of a Muslim. That is where we go. But we're always rebelling against Allah because we disconnect the happenings of life from the maker of life. So then things don't go away. Ya Rabbi, why, why? We keep on resisting like a true rebel. And if we were to have found peace in our hearts, knowing that we didn't cause it, knowing that we were looking for solutions, but the doors didn't open, we say, Ya Rabbi, inni la as'aluka daf'a ma turid, walakinni as'aluka ta'yid bi ruhin min indika fi ma turid. Rabbi, inni la as'aluka daf'a ma turid. Ya Rabbi, I don't ask you to keep away from, what, from me what you want. 
Rather, I ask you to strengthen me, to carry the burden of what you want from me, sorry, the burden of what you want from me. And then when we submit, when we submit to Allah, that is the only place where we find peace. And the only reason why we didn't find peace is because we still didn't accept the qada and the qadr of Allah Jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith is amazing. It is a king talking to the servants. It is the leader talking to the subjects. And it is time to look at religion through the eyes of a religious spiritual adult who knows that going back to Allah has everything to do with working, has everything to do with putting effort in it, has everything to do not just with outwardly worshipping Allah, but finding that heart that is in harmony with the divine will, with the ahkam al-shari'ya wa al-ahkam al kawmiya I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaj'alana wa iyaakum min al-mustami'ina min qawmi innahu wa liyu thalika wa qadiru alayhi wa astaghfirullaha innahu wa ghafur rahim. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri Rasulillah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi So as we've seen, barakallahu fikum, the most important message that we need to look for behind every verse, behind every hadith is amal. Every verse and every hadith wants us to be illuminated inwardly and to be transformed outwardly. And if we disconnect outward and inward actions from Qur'an and Sunnah, then we're just reading a text. <laughs> but if we look for the action, we will be the best people ever. We are not the best people just because a Muslim. The better we are in Islam, the more Allah will elevate us as an ummah and as an individual. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I want to end on this note. Ya ladina amanu, lima taqulun? Oh believers, why do you say what you do not put into practice? Those whom Allah will be most likely to plan against are those who say what they do not practice. So this verse was a painful verse for the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. This verse was horrifying and terrifying for these people. Because Allah Jalla wa Ala says, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِبُونَ Do you tell people to do good? And do you forget yourself? And this while you are reciting the book, don't you have sound minds? It has nothing to do with how much you know. It has everything to do with what you do with what you know. So this is why it is Barakallahu fikum. Even when you go home tonight, write down what you know. You say, what do I know about this? What do I know about that? You write it down and you compare it to what you do and don't do. If you don't do it, ask Allah to forgive you and inspire you to do it. And if you do it, ask Allah to preserve you and keep on and allow you to keep on doing it and to preserve that for you. But don't go back to Allah. And I'm saying this to myself in the first place. Don't go back to Allah with a load of knowing and with a lack of doing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial. Ameen. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt. Ameen. Wa afina fi man afayt. Ameen. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barakana fi man a'tayt. Ameen. Wa qina wa sif anna sharma ma qadayt. Fa inna ka taqdi wa la yubda alayk. Fa inna hu lan ya'izza man a'dayt wa lan yadhilla man wa'alayt. Tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. Allahumma ja'al khayri yawmina yawmina al-qaqa fi. Allahumma ja'al baqa'ana fi hadhi dunya sawma wa liqa'a ma'akum rabbi ida. Allahumma inna nas'amka antakun ma'am mazlumin. Allahumma kun ma'am mazlumin fi kulli makan. اللهم أرنا في الظالمين يوما أسودا اللهم أرنا في الظالمين يوما أسودا اللهم لا تأخذنا بما فعل سفهاء منا اللهم اجعلنا ممن يقول لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عند الموت سبحانك يا ربي إني كنت من الظالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين